We are back here on the channel, youtube.com slash Brian Fonseca. Kevin Gray is back. He covers the Dallas Mavericks. And I expected that we were going to have this conversation again uh, <laughs> shortly after we had the other one talking about, hey, could Dallas actually make a run to the finals? And they have since made a run to the finals. <laughs> we were saying, we were saying, hey, they could probably take out anybody in the Western Conference except for maybe Denver. And, you know, looking back on it, I, I don't think that it would have been crazy to say they could have beaten Denver, but they didn't have to because they beat Minnesota. They mm -hmm. beat the man. They beat the man who beat the man, in other words. Yeah. Um, you know, to, to put it in wrestling terms, and we're both wrestling guys up here. That's right. Um, Kevin, just. We said it before. This is the best team Luka Doncic has at his disposal. This is the best one. You have Kyrie Irving. You have guys who are legitimate two-way players. Like Derrick Jones Jr. is shooting 40% from three just about in the playoffs and is playing really good defensively. P.J. Washington, the shot's been a little more up and down since he went crazy against Oklahoma City, but he is still going at it both ends of the floor. What did that series against Minnesota, what did that tell you the most about their chances going forward. Well, appreciate you having me, Brian. Yeah, it's um, it, it tells me that this team has gelled at the right time. I mean, this started during the second half of the year in their most meaningful games. They went 16 and two. They had the best defense in the league and they were right there with Boston really as the two best teams in the league during the second half of the year. And what they proved in this series against Minnesota is, I mean, Luka Doncic for you know, what we've now come to learn and know about him over the last several years is that he's a killer. And you saw the killer instinct come out in game five where, I mean, he literally decided that the series was over and put the Mavericks on his back, scoring 20 points in that first quarter. I mean, the logo three that he hit, you know, really kind of just put, you know, <laughs> everyone on notice that, I mean, I, I, the, the audac first of all, real quick on that, the audacity of that yes. shot <laughs> in that moment it's kind of wild, and but that is the kind of player that we are talking about. And people will, you know, complain that you know Luca does a little too much complaining to the refs, a little much too, too much talking to you know the officials, which at times he does, and that's that's a fair criticism of him. It's the only but, issue I have with him as a player, yeah, literally which the only I think, one. Yeah, a lot of folks have, which again is a fair criticism, and he's acknowledged it over the last couple of years as well. That hey, it's something I gotta you know I gotta cut that out. You know, when it comes to these conversations, you know, with the referees, but. The one thing I will say is that, you know, folks were ready to crown Anthony Edwards as, you know, the next quote unquote Michael Jordan, if the if you will, which is all kind of really unfair for a 22 year old in his first, you know, real postseason. I mean, people have been looking for the next Michael Jordan esque type of player. I mean, they honestly have been missing it. He's been in Dallas now for almost the last six years because he has that kind of killer instinct that Michael had when he was playing. Mm. And, you know, you can go find the video yourself, but. You know, there's a moment where Michael acknowledges Luca during, you know, what before an all star game, he just grabs him, you know, gives him a big bear hug. Like it was kind of one of those stamp That's of approval right. things. Yeah. yeah I saw you know. that. I remember that now. Yeah. So MJ is given, you know, Luca the stamp of approval. He's on Team Jordan. And that's, you know, there's some other stuff. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about here is that you see that now come to fruition in the postseason. And he was spectacular um, throughout the course of the series, was the Western Conference Finals MVP and put a stamp on it uh, in game five. He's 25 years old. Um, yeah. I, I think the thing people miss is that, like, Anthony Edwards, and this is what Vinny Goodwill was asking him and Carl Anthony Towns, like, you guys have to do some more losing. And Carl Anthony Towns was like, well, how much more do we got to lose? And I <laughs> kind of get it from his perspective because he's yeah. in his ninth season. But for Anthony Edwards, like, even if you're going to be one of the special ones, guys don't usually win right out the gate. Tim Duncan did in his second year, but that was a little bit of a different situation with the Spurs. I mean, David mm -hmm. Robinson was his damn teammate. <laughs> yeah. You know, and when you look at um, Luca, in terms of him historically and his stardom, he's in his sixth year. He's 25. Like, this is around the time where the all-timers start really getting here, getting yes. to the finals. In terms of matching up with Boston, you know, they have all the advanced metrics are, like, favoring them and Sports books have Celtics in five with the shortest odds at like plus 300. Again, we're doing this with Boston again, overvaluing them, in my opinion. <laughs> Jimmy Butler was out, Terry Rozier was out, Halliburton, Damian Lillard, uh, Giannis, almost the entire main Nick rotation, Donovan Mitchell, Karis Levert, Jared Allen. Like these are the guys who got hurt during the playoffs or right before the playoffs in the case of Giannis uh, and Terry Rozier. And Boston didn't have to see any of them. 
So now it kind of feels like, all right, are they going into a fight without sparring, even though the metrics all say Boston is this overwhelming team? Like, how do you mm -hmm. feel like Dallas is going to match up with them, especially coming off of, again, extended rest, league leading and net rating, which a team hasn't led the league in net rating and then gone on to win the title since the Golden State Warriors uh, with Kevin Durant the second year. How does Dallas match up with this team? Well, boss is going to face the healthiest team that they've seen all postseason. That's for sure. Uh, you know, the Mavericks were able to get Derek Lively back in game five, which was huge for them. You saw the effect that he had, you know, against Minnesota. So this is by far the healthiest team that the Celtics will see. One thing about Dallas is that, you know, this team this year was 23 and nine in the clutch. Only the Lakers had more wins in the clutch at 24 mm. this NBA season. So in the last five minutes of games, this is not a team that you want to be close with down the stretch because they have proven time and time again that they can win close games. You've seen how they close a couple of these games in the Western Conference Finals, and that confidence has grown throughout the year. So Boston, for some reason, tends to have one of those games where they just don't look like themselves. It's usually like a game two of a series for some reason, and they just don't look like themselves. Either they just shoot themselves out of a game from the three-point line or wherever the case may be. You don't want to do that with this Mavericks team because, you know, again, what you saw in Minnesota, they took the first two games of that series and they had seven and two on the road. So they are comfortable playing away from the American Airlines Center in Dallas. And if you don't come with your A game, Boston is going to get a rude awakening with a team that's playing with the utmost confidence right now and not afraid to play anywhere uh, when it comes to this postseason. So, yeah, that's. Boston at five is a, is a tad disrespectful. I mean, I say that with a little bit of, you know, obviously having covered, you know, the, the Mavericks team that I do. But Boston at five is a, is a tad disrespectful. Like, I can see how Boston is a favorite. Obviously, they've been, you know, arguably the best team in the league all year. But, yeah, the Mavericks will definitely use that as fuel uh, to their fire for sure when the series gets started next week. I talked about with uh, Josue Pavon, who covers the Celtics, the the Kyrie Irving revenge factor here. I wonder if there's a, a Chris Stapps Porzingis one that we're we're sort of overlooking here. Now, Porzingis, uh, this is another thing. Like, this is why Celtics and five is actually disrespectful to me. We don't even know if Chris Stapps Porzingis is going to be good. Like, sure. all, the expectation is he'll be back for the finals. But we don't know if that's even going to be game one. At the time, game one will start. That will be 38 days removed from his calf injury. As of this mm -hmm. recording, we haven't really heard whether or not he's taking contact yet, and we're now less than a week from game one beginning. That's important. Kevin Durant, again, 33 days removed. And I pointed this out before. 33 days removed from his calf injury in 2019 playoffs, came back, ruptured his Achilles. Giannis had a calf strain down the stretch of this season. He was out for 23 days at the time Milwaukee got eliminated, and he said he wasn't even close to returning. Now, I don't know if wasn't even close means he needed another two weeks, a month or whatever, but 38 days, 23 days separated by two weeks. So Porzingis has to be healthy. If he is, how much does it change the series? Because we all kind of think that he's Boston's X factor. Yeah, no, and I agree that he is because, I mean, as we came to find out in Dallas, he's a guy that can stretch the floor from the three-point line. He's a great shot blocker, and he really kind of changes the way that Boston could play with their five-out offense, and they got a lot of guys that can shoot, and Porzingis adds just another element you know, of that ability to shoot from distance. So, And then when you add in his rim protection, he's a force on that end as well. So, yeah, he's a major X factor because – you know, with Daniel Gaffer and Derek Lively, you're pulling them away from the basket, which gives opportunities for Tatum and Brown to be able to create off the dribble and get into some, you know, some clearer lanes because of their abilities to be able to get to the basket. So, yeah, Porzingis is huge for them because he spreads the floor and really allows for a lot more space and his ability to knock down threes, you know, could really give the Mavericks problems. So, yeah, that to me is one of the big things among a couple of other matchups I'm looking forward to. Uh, that really could determine this series based off of how these two teams like to play offensively and defensively, particularly in Boston with the way that they rely on the three-pointer as much as they do. Since the three-point shot became an NBA uh, staple, we've never had a team, never had a finals really, that had the top two teams in three-point attempt rate meet each other in the finals. We've never had that. Like Boston was number one in three-point attempt rate during the regular season, 47.1. Dallas was second, 44.1. And these teams are playing in the finals. I bring that up because Boston is trying to play the math. And 
if Dallas is going to be able to keep up from three, especially if Chris Asperzingas is not like Chris Asperzingas, but even if he's there, if Dallas is able to keep up from three, like, do you think because with Boston, they're trying to win the math equation, they're trying to win shooting variants, and because of that, it can bite them in their ass every now and then. Mm -hmm. This is how they've lost other playoff games with Dallas. Like, is that a battle for them that they feel like they can sort of keep up with them from three and then Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, who are the two best offensive creators in the series, can they give you enough in those clutch situations to potentially win this series? That's the tough part because during the first half of the year, the Mavericks were the team that bombed away from the three-point line and relied on the three-point shot. But once they kind of remade their identity, you know, during the second half of the year, that kind of changed and they weren't great shooting the ball from three. They've had games where they've been able to have you know, some really good shooting nights from three, but that's not what they rely on necessarily anymore. They rely on their physicality, their ability to dominate in the paint. And Luka Dodge to Kyrie Irving creating offense, you know, for themselves and for everyone else. So that's where the math game could flip up for, you know, Dallas in terms of trying to defend Boston. But, you know, that's where I, I want to see how the Mavericks defend the three-point line because they are capable of doing But But conversely, can P.J. Washington, can Derrick Jones Jr., can Josh Green to a lesser degree, you know, and others be able to make enough three-pointers to be able to keep up at times because, I mean, the Mavericks are the best team in shooting corner threes this year, so they're going to have plenty of those wide open. Yeah. And I'm sure Boston is aware of how good the Mavericks have been from the corner three this year, so they'll make, yeah. you know, sure that they're guarding that. But, yeah, that's where the math could flip is the Boston just gets hot from the three-point line. They're, you know, they're shooting you out of, out of ball games because of how much – and they do it in volume. They are devastatingly good from the three-point line. Can you put into, and this will be the last one, uh, before briefly we'll do predictions at the end because we have to, but <laughs> can you put into context just what this series means for Luka Doncic? Not necessarily like the legacy, so to speak, but sure. you know, you don't want it to be that hacky, but really like what, what does this mean for him historically? Like he has a chance to, at least in many people's minds, to take over the number one spot in terms of best player in the NBA if he were to get this done. Still think for now it's Jokic, but kind of think Luka Doncic, he gets the championship. He gets the title belt, if you will, if he wins the series because he'll likely be finals MVP too. Yeah, I think this is the opportunity for him to prove, at least at the moment, that he is the best player in the world. I mean, you look at the six years that he's put together – Five first-team All-NBA selections, was a York Rookie of the Year. I mean, he was this year's scoring champion. You know, you mentioned getting to the NBA Finals, winning the Conference Finals MVP. He's arguably had one of the greatest starts to a career that we've ever seen yeah. in this league. Yeah. And when you start to examine the numbers and put it all together, it's astounding what he's been able to do. So, yeah, for him, I think this is the stage to be able to prove for everyone that yeah he is ascending to be the best player in the world and defend and winning a championship over this boston team after the gauntlet that they ran through in the west to get it done yeah he would become i believe the best player in the world and that's with all due respect to to Giannis and yeah, sga yeah, and sure. you know, the some of the guys that we and Jokic, i was as you mentioned but yeah luca would be right there prediction do you have dallas winning this series Oh, man, this is the first prediction I'd be able to make on this series because, I mean, <laughs> having just thought about it initially, like I have mine already. Let me hear yours. I'm interested to hear yours to see <laughs> what you what you feel, because I'm still look, I might be emotionally too invested in like what just happened over the last, you know, uh, 40 or 24 hours as we as we record this here. But uh, I, I, let me hear yours. What, what you got? Because I can I can get to Dallas winning a game seven. Like, this mm. is what it comes down to for me. I think Dallas can win a road game seven. So if I think they could win a road game seven, I think they could win the series. If I didn't think they could win a road game seven, they would have to beat Boston in six games. Luka Doncic, he's a killer on the road in the playoffs. He's one of two guys in NBA history who is averaging 30 points per game in their playoff career. The other one's Michael Jordan. And a lot yeah. of that is in road games because Dallas is usually the underdog in a series, is usually of the five seed or whatever the case may be. And Luca has had these big closeout games on the road. He did it against Phoenix and 
the one against Minnesota looked eerily similar and his playoff numbers are better on the road, at least from a scoring perspective. There's real value in Dallas in this series. And also with Boston, I just, I need to know what's up with Chris Das Porzingis. Sure. If they have Chris Das Porzingis, I would feel much better about like, oh yeah, Boston's probably got this. But at the same time, Dallas has the best two creators in this series. And late in games where we get a little bit uptight about Boston, who, you know, they shook some demons maybe in the Indiana Pacers series, but Luka Doncic is not Tyrese Halliburton and Kyrie Irving is not Andrew Nemhart. My bets are going to be on Dallas because there's just better value there. And I trust Luka Doncic, who is arguably the best player in the world. I think he's right now second, but we'll talk again after the finals. <laughs> uh, I think I think he can win a road game seven because I've seen him do it against a team who's frankly lost a lot of home games in the playoffs also the last mm-hmm. few years. My heart says the Mavericks do this in seven. My head says that Boston wins this in six. Look, Boston yeah. has just and, and, that's, and prob- the, that's probably the right answer, honestly. Yeah, I mean Boston, they have they're they're good. They're and another thing is they're deep as well. I mean they they've got a really good team. You know, not just you know their five guys that they have. They've got you know a good bench as well. Um, but man, it's hard to bet against Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. The way that they've been able to gel and be able to put this together. It's difficult. I think the more "quote unquote" talented team is the Boston Celtics. If we're evaluating this objectively, uh, but I have the privilege of not having to do that in this case, <laughs> at least for this moment, uh, when it comes to the Mavericks. So, yeah, my head says that Boston wins it in six, but my heart says that the Mavericks can get this done in seven, which means they got to get it done in six probably <laughs> to get this out of here to get Boston out of there. Because having to go play them on a home floor in Game Seven is is tough to do, but. Yeah. yeah, this either way is going to be a hell of a series for sure. Can't wait. Kevin Gray uh, follows his work, social media, Kevin Gray Sports, YouTube also inside the Mavs, 97.1 Freak, the whole thing. We'll be back with more on the channel very soon.